Hello and welcome. We have a new tutorial for you. It's called Perspective Reflection. We're going to build that in motion for Final Cut Pro 10. And we're also going to offer it as a free plugin that you can download from the iDustrial Revolution site. Use it and customize it how you wish. But it's actually a request. Uh, we got an email saying, could we build it? Um, or how do we build it? So we thought, why not do both? Do a freebie and a tutorial. And just to help out, if you could hit the like button and the subscribe, that'd be great. It does help to get the word out there about free stuff and, of course, how Motion and Funk are great. Right, let's get on with it. So let's start off with the Motion Browser and we're going to choose building a Final Cut Pro effect. It doesn't really matter what size or frame rate because Motion will sort that out. And duration wise it doesn't really matter because there's going to be no uh, build in, build outs or effects like that. So I can just go straight ahead and open that. OK, I'm pretty sure you're already familiar with this view. It's the view uh, when you open up a new project with this new effect and you can see the effect source is there. Um, that's the grey area that's going to be replaced by the video when you drop the effect onto the clip. So we're going to use that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone. Make that. I'm going to call that main clone. Main clone. And then I'm going to turn off that group. Now, why do I do that? I've said it before, because it always gives me the flexibility to go back to the original source without having to dig down into layers. And you've got that kind of like as a, as a benchmark, this is the input of, um, of the effect. So that's why I like to uh, actually work on clone layers rather than the effect on here. Now that's fine. First thing I need to do is actually move the anchor point on here. So we can look in properties and go to anchor points. You can see it's 0, 0, 0, 0. It's this point here. I need to move it to the bottom. OK, going down, that's minus. So in the Y, I'm going to go minus 540. And it moves it up, yes, because it's moved everything up, not the position. So I just need to move it back minus 540. Um, it's minus 540 because it's 1080 high. Obviously, that's half of there. OK, that's fine. Now, I need to do the reflection. And you think, oh, just rotate it or whatever. No, it's actually a reflection, so it's a mirror image. So what I'm going to do is actually make a clone of that. And let's call that reflection. And then rather than rotating, I'm actually going to do something sneaky. I'm going to invert the scale on the Y. So that's minus 100 on there. OK, now you can't see it because obviously it's over the top of it. But if I bring this down and go minus 1080, it's right on the bottom there. You can't see that because it's actually off the edge of the screen. But what I can do is I can bring this down. And there you go. You can actually see the reflection underneath that. That's because this is really good on here because I've actually got the show full area on here toggled on, which I really like in motion. I wish um, Funnel Cut had a bit more of it. OK. Now let's put those into a group. So put those into group and let's call that um, image and reflection. And now I can move those. But I do need to reassign that to be zero. You see it's kind of like halfway up and halfway down because you have actually made something that's twice as high. OK, one thing I haven't done is I haven't saved it. So let's just save that. And let's call this perspective reflection. Let's hope I've got that spelled right. And publish. That should be available in Final Cut Pro 10 now. OK, what next? Well, I think I need a background. So what I'm going to do is going to drop another group on there and then go off to the generators. And we're going to say we are going to do a gradient. That's going to make life a lot easier. So let's call this background. Once I've spelt it correctly and we'll change the gradient, we're going to go from I think we're going to go from white to black. So uh, let's go white on there. And then on this one down on here, we are going to go black. I can select that from those colors and give this a bit of a tweak when it comes to the Crank that there. Yeah, I mean, I always find these gradients always a bit tricky. Look, there we go. We're adjusting the end point rather than that. We're still getting... Uh, OK, so that's just the start point. There we go. That's like something we're after. 
It looks like adjusting the start and end points in the Y of the gradient give much smoother control rather than doing the middle or doing this. Uh, that, that's actually the middle anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to come across that again a bit later on. So it's good to know that these are the ones to adjust. Right, now I quite like that. Now I'm going to do that. That's our original clone. Now I need to apply um, a mask to the reflection. Okay, so it, that's this group here. Now trying to learn the shortcuts. I think it's Command Shift M for an image mask. Yep, it is, or it is actually in the menu. Object, um, add image mask. There we go. So that's going to act on this upside down reflection. And yep, you guessed it. I'm going to put another gradient in. So let's go back to the library, and we're doing the gradient. But what I could do is I could actually pinch this one, couldn't I? That's a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to hold Option down to make a duplicate of it and drop it in. It's obviously in the wrong place at the moment. So I'm going to drop that down. It's going to be minus 1080. Yeah, so that's minus 1080. Don't want to see it, so I'm going to drop it in the image mask and it'll turn it off automatically. So I'll go image mask and drop that gradient into there. And because it's looking at the alpha, the alpha is actually solid on the gradient, so it needs to go from the luma of there. And we've got it. Look at that. How easy was that? That was what a great idea copying that was. Okay. Now if we go back to the image and reflection, and we have that, and I do a twist on the Y, we have that. I mean, that's really, really nearly quite there, isn't it? Now, what I will do for the um, release of the free one, I'll put some, I'll put quite a lot of controls in. I'll try and publish as much as I can. Um, so the generator, the, these controls will be published, the beginning and end, and these, the beginning, of, uh, you know, the start and end. So you can control that, as will the opacity of this background. Actually, what I can do, I can do that now. I can do a toggle for the background on off and opacity and publish those. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. This is the opacity go publish when it wants to so let's publish that and we're going to say look at the project that is um, background opacity let's put a capital B on there okay we like that and then I'm going to put this overall group with the gradient in it but I'm actually going to put that into a rig so put this opacity into a rig so I don't know what's going wrong with my mouse today okay add to rig create a new rig we're going to do a checkbox and that's on there checkbox yep 100% take it off and it's zero on off lovely publish that look at the project and we're going to say just say background back Around on there then just reorder these to make it look a bit better so we've got the background and background opacity so not only can you adjust the opacity on there but you can actually turn the whole thing on and off and by doing that by nesting it into a group obviously you've got two lots of opacity controls which you can do that now why do you want to do that well you might want more than one image on the screen at the same time so if you like this gradient background you can start off with one on there so if we take this one and maybe shrink it back down even further, oh, that's the wrong control, let's shrink that back down a bit further, and then we move it over. You could actually put another one, a mirror image of it maybe, just take these values and invert that one, so it'd be minus 37.7, and push it over here. But you'd also have the background on, so by turning, being able to turn the background off, you can multi-layer this thing up on there. So I'm actually quite pleased with that at the moment. That looks pretty good. Um, I will publish some more controls. I mean, what I think the thing to do is to actually just hit save. And let's have a look at that in Final Cut. Here we are in Final Cut Pro, and if we go over to the effects browser, we can see I actually put it in development, but when it's released, it'll be in the XFX free folder. Perspective Reflection, just drag it over and drop it on. And there we go. We've got this reflection and the grad background. Now you could do it in 3D and do the reflection with the floor and everything like that, but that gets a bit complicated. It's more flexible, but this is actually kind of like a, a quick and easy way of doing it. And it more or less gives the same effect on there. Um, you can't really do camera moves on it. Maybe what I'll do is build a 
better one that shrinks back as well. And what I'll do is maybe add that to uh, our very popular XFX um, toolkit, which um, I use that every day on, on, on projects um, and it's just getting better and better. Um, maybe I'll add it to that with kind of like with a shrink back and etc etc which makes it really useful. But by the time you actually watch this, this will be uploaded onto the iDustrial Revolution website and it'll be completely free to download. Um, you can pick it apart, see how I've done it, uh, maybe add to it. Um, but it was a request from a customer and they wanted it. So rather incorporate it um, and take a long time to get it out, I thought I'd do it really quickly so they had something to play with. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the free plugin and we'll see you on the next one. And also, if you've got any requests, just put them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks very much. Bye bye.